and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by simply utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, I'll be back doing both of my regular videos this week. My live Q&A will be on Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and the Mythic Plays video will be on Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, we don't have any news on Solomon Kane, Reichbusters Project Vril, Enchanters, or Hell of the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to just take a moment and answer some of the questions we're seeing floating around quite a bit. First, concerning the bases in the Teutonic Knights expansion, a confusing sentence in an older update taken out of the context of the rest of the update seems to be the sole issue here. While we certainly apologize for the confusion, we've been clear from the get-go as it was published on our Kickstarter page and on the GameFound page that no bases were advertised for the Teutonic expansion, and they should have been purchased separately. We understand that this is a problem for some people, and we most certainly will try to see if there are any solutions that can be offered at this time and get back to you as soon as we can. Concerning fulfillment in the EU, there have been some comments on how long it's taking to get shipment notifications after address verifications, and that when shipments do arrive, not all the products backers have ordered are included. Please understand that since Meeple Logistics decided to process products as they come in without waiting for all the containers to arrive, that this fulfillment is bound to be abnormal in the very least. Generally speaking, if your pledge is missing items upon receipt, they will be sent as soon as the containers that have those items arrive. For North America, we reported last week that address verification should be going out towards the end of last week, as this was what we were told by the hubs. Unfortunately, that timeline got pushed back because they had to finish completing another campaign in between Steam Watchers and Joan of Arc, so please bear with us. For Steam Watchers today, we've noticed more than a few of you stating how long it's been since receiving the game and the neoprene mat still hasn't come in. So we spot checked a few pledges on the back end of the logistics software and those that we checked showed the neoprene mat being shipped on either November 11th or 12th. So, in short, the mats are on the way, and most, if not all of you, should be receiving your play mats very soon. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at support at mythicgames.net, and our customer support team will be glad to assist in whatever you need. For Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 today, we have some images from the factory of the packaging process that has already taken place and is still ongoing thanks to the power outages we reported last week. The box shown in these pictures has Destinies and Clash of Rage on the sides, and it's actually, in fact, the German edition of the box. So, while not as extensive a montage as some of our other campaigns have been able to show, here you go. For Darkest Dungeon today, we wanted to mention that my buddy JT and I have finished recording our first session of our three planned sessions last Saturday. I'll be doing the best that I can to have that edited and posted on the Mythic Games YouTube channel by Thursday or Friday this week. And we're trying to record the second installment this week too, so maybe the second video will be out by next week but we'll have to wait and see. JT does have a rather demanding 9 to 5, and I want to be lenient on his time with his family. But rest assured, we're trying to make it all happen as soon as we can. This week is normally also a development and production update time for Darkest Dungeon, but our project manager is really under the weather this week, so that update will come next week. In the meantime, be on the lookout for that playthrough to land either Thursday or Friday. We'll see you then. 
For Six Siege this week, we wanted to share the advancement of the project from a development point of view. These last two months have been spent rewriting many game concepts and harmonizing rules and wording all together. This has been a surface matter rather than a deep revamp. Except for a few simplifications or game amendments, the main mechanisms and balance have seldom changed. For a few weeks, we have proceeded rewording the entirety of our files, as we explained in our last update. We did this on the rule book, missions books, games aids, and all the operators. This Herculean task was done by us and the art director of the project. With him, we rethought how the rule book should be read, moved several sections, and highlighted several important points thanks to frames or visual examples. Basically, we tried to make reading the rules more intuitive and to make the rule set wording more consistent. These last few weeks, we entered into a new stage of development, the blind testing of the game and of its rules. During this step, we think the rules and the game elements are almost final. We aim to point out minor typos and understanding problems. Our blind readers discover the rules for the first time, and this first step is crucial. Our internal readers have had access to all the files and prototypes and have provided their comments as well, but parallel to that, external blind testers have been called. They had to read the rules privately, then, with us in the room, they had to explain them to another player who never played it, and then they would play after that. So far, we've been very impressed by how well the rules have been understood. These first blind tests have hit near to no problems. We've received the comments and feedback from the testers and readers, sorted them according to their relevance, and have integrated them into our files. Now, we must simply touch up the layout a final time. Then, once this step is ended, we'll forward the files to Anne, our localization manager and proofreader of choice. She will validate our work and send it to translation, and boy, this game is available in a handful of languages. We're looking forward to showing you the final version of the game, and we'll do so as soon as possible. The French version, our master language for this project, will be finished before the translation into English. Once we have the English available, though, we'll share the updated files and we'll try to film a game with the entire game, all operators and maps from expansions. Finally, know that we absolutely love hearing your feedback and seeing how much you get involved in this game. Numerous players have tried the game as a demo on Tabletop Simulator, and the BGG forum for the game is quite friendly and active. So we do want to thank you all for your support. Well, with just three days left in the Monster Apocalypse board game Kickstarter campaign, we announced yesterday the Total Apocalypse Pledge, the gameplay all-in for the project at $449. That's a total savings of $52 overall. It includes everything that the product offers for gameplay, the core box, three to four player expansion, all six faction expansions, the Smashville expansion, both map packs, the Wreckburg expansion, the Menacing Protection expansion, and every single one of the scratch goals reached. Not to mention the Mythic Games HQ building, too. If you want everything that Monster Apocalypse offers for gameplay, look no further. At the writing of this script on Monday, we're, we were closing in on the next stretch goal at just over $809,000, so we are trucking along. Thank you to everyone for your support, and we can't wait to see where we end up. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. That's the plan. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what wonders he might be able to show you. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday. But that's it for this week, though. Stay safe. Play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>